Good morning everyone, I'm TK10962 of the UK Garrison and the 501st Legion. The gentleman sat next to me is Mr Stephen Bailey. We will go on to talk about his, his role in the Star Wars universe. Obviously, it's the 21st of April today. As we all know, that is International Stormtrooper Day. But what I'm about to do, there's no day more fitting. I hope you enjoy this and sit back and enjoy the show. It's officially Stormtrooper Day today, so we felt that this was quite a fitting day to have this interview. There's a little surprise at the end of it for everyone, so I hope you enjoy the, the interview. Thank you. So, morning, Stephen. Morning. Um, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Your role within the original Star Wars film, what were you doing as a day job around that time? At that time, I was working in Fort River Masons, temporarily. Department yeah, store? Yeah, yep. the department store. Yep. Yep. Okay. Having left the Midlands to come down to London to find a different sort of life from engineering, which is what I was in yep. at that age, um, Yeah, I, did, I, I was just temporarily working there. While I was doing, uh, I did a modelling course in, in Bond Street. And then from that, the agent suggested I should join Central Castings, which I did. Okay. Um, and stuff. And then, once I joined the FAA and got into Central Castings, I, the very first job I was offered was the, this, was Star Wars, and I had no idea Why? what we're going to. So I just got on a carriage, got taken to Elm Street Studios, Put in a costume, wore one of these, and um, and that was that. Really, that's how it's. That, that was that. Wow. Me getting on to. So yeah. this year, straight in yeah. at the deep end, so to speak. It was the very first job I ever did. Yeah, on as a film extra, basically. So, so. Did, did they tell you what you were being, the, what the role entailed when when they offered it you? No, no, they just because basically, if you're an extra, you get you get told to be somewhere at a certain time, and you get taken to the studio. In those days, now you get. Just have a fitting. We didn't even have a fitting in those days. I, mean, I was fitted on the day, the first day of filming. So I just went there, not knowing what the hell I was doing. Went there, got into a costume. Yeah. You know, we were, it was quite sort of like a weird thing. Um, uh, and off we went to set, basically. And, and then I had a few days of doing that. There were a couple oh, of weeks, just okay. odd days here and there. You arrive on site, first day. You're not fully aware of what you're going to be doing. And you see this a stormtrooper outfit. What, what went through your head? Area. Weird. <laughs> Weird. No, I just thought it was exciting. I was a 23-year-old chap, but okay. I wasn't stupid. I mean, I thought, yeah, what is this? What am I going, you know, what is this? I don't know what this is, but, it, you know, it's my first job. It's it's exciting, you know, well, whatever. And we got in with all the other lads that were there, yep. dressed. And when I walked into the set, I mean, that was like, wow. That was like, I didn't expect that. Yeah. Because it was as big and as fabulous as it looks on the film actually. Yes, yeah. I can imagine, you know, walking into the hangar area. And yeah, it's a, it's a, it wasn't just small and made to look big, it was like, it was big. <laughs> right, okay. It was big. Were you allowed to talk about it with friends or...? There was no non... I was not told anything. I wasn't said, don't talk about it. This day and age, when I do film this stuff, now we have to do non-disclosure agreements and stuff yep. like that. Sign that, we go, yeah, for, yeah, we go for fitting and thought, prior, you get an idea. Often that take the cameras off you feel you, well your phones these yep. days your phones are confiscated as you go on to set of course yeah um, and they won't let you take any pictures at all some productions do let you there was this day and age I didn't have a camera no well, you know I, I left the middle as I'd come to I'd come to London I was in digs um, I came down with just my dad's boot was full of all my stuff clothes <laughs> and, and that, was, that was all I got to my name yeah 70 quid in the trustee savings bank and off I went, and I never went. I never went home after that. Just, I just stayed in London. I loved it so much. So, um, so yeah, it just progressed. But the year of the first year I had in seventy six into seventy seven of doing some film extra work, I didn't do enough to be able to sustain a living. Okay. You know, it's just so I went back to engineering. <laughs> what was the day rate? Um, I think we were getting, and if I remember right, a few pennies more than twenty five quid. You were paid in cash on the day. You queued up on, when you came out of the studio. There was always a, like a, a, charabang, a caravan thing, like an yeah. ice cream van sort of thing. A guy there, you queue up, name, get a, you had a chitty. I wish I could have saved my chitties. I haven't got any more. <laughs> threw them all away. Um, and they used to charge you, give you what you were having. They took off your national insurance. So you paid your, your stamp. Yeah. And then you got cash in hand. Wow. 
and you got cash in hand. And uh, yeah, so, but I didn't really, well, in those days, because I didn't do a lot of filming, um, that cash went in my pocket and got spent. I didn't think I had to tell the tax man. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, the thing is, they obviously did tell the tax man because they did their national. They don't do this yes. anymore. You no, don't pay yeah, your. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to pay your own national yes. insurance. So you don't. Yes, of course, this day and age, we we don't. But you still, I still declare money now because obviously agents tell the tax man if he does a quick check. I didn't realise this at the time. Yeah. That so once I did go back into engineering, but a year afterwards. I had a, a bill from the tax man. Oh, um, that, that, those are <laughs> it was only like about three or four hundred quid, but in 77, 78, yeah, it was a lot of money, really, yeah, 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 yeah. for salary. And, um, and I was panicking. But they just they just altered my PAYE thing, and yeah. they took it back that way. Okay. The hotel was in. But I had no idea. So, yeah, I got caught by the tax man. <laughs> <laughs> for, the, the unpleasant side effect of, of being in Star Wars. So I didn't get, I didn't make much money at all. No, no, okay. <laughs> but it was interesting because that twenty-five quid plus a few coppers, whatever. Yeah. Um, was a hell of a lot of money then. Yeah. 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 But the rate we get now, I don't think it is. No. Because the basic date now is only about ninety-seven plus all the bits that the FA give you, like okay. travel costs and stuff yeah. like that. But. In comparison to that, I think yeah. that's quite After 45 years, you thought it might have gone up a bit more. Yeah, but... a lot more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so when your friends did find out what you were doing, how did they react? I took my... When, when the film came out in some sense, I remember I was talking to my cousin the other day, she'd just come back from teaching in Germany and came to live in, in London. So I said, well, I've just been on this film called Star Wars, whatever. I said, it's coming out soon, whatever. I said, so we'll go and see it. Said, well, which one are you? And I said, well, I'll show you when we get into it. I said, there'll be two people on... On the on this uh, ramp going up to a, a spaceship, I said, "Not be." I was be on the right, looking at the yep. thing, and then I got lost. And um, and said, "Okay, so yeah." So we went to see it, and she was not interested. <laughs> it's not a cup of tea, you know. Said, "Oh, is that you then?" <laughs> In the theatre, <laughs> the said, "Yes." So, but other friends, no, not until many years after, because I never said much about it, you know, I mean, nobody thought, of, no, nobody followed that film that no. I knew in no, those days, it, nobody followed yeah, that series of anything. I mean, the other franchise at the time was very popular. Um, I'll tell you, what was very popular after that was, was the Harrison Ford's next three films with, with Rob, what was his name, the, the, dark, the one of the, he was on the, um, Robert Watts, wasn't it, he was the, one of the, Yes, because he, he was, he was yeah. me, and, and then he went from those three films on Star Wars and he went off and did the three yeah. Indiana Jones yeah. films with Harrison. Yeah. So Because he was on this Comic Con recently as well. So ah, okay. So, sad to see him in a wheelchair. Yeah, unfortunately, the years have ticked by. Um, mm. So I guess it is the 45th anniversary of Star Wars this year. Did you think it would still be as impactful as it is? No, no. No, because, no, I didn't at the time. It was just just another. It, it was it was a film I'd seen and I didn't I didn't realize I didn't follow the I, I personally didn't follow the next you know the next two films that came okay. out you know, the Empire Strikes Back and the Return of the Jedi and stuff like that. And have you recently. now? Have I, you seen them now? Okay. I've now got somebody's let me their Chrome <laughs> I've Got Disney Plus. Okay, so you've you've seen all of them. I've seen mine again. Yeah. I, I I often saw because I've got a, a, when I had a video recorder yep. I've got a video that the uh, the uh, the one I was in. Um, but I've seen, do, 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 so it was my one, the episode about the Return of the Jedi, and then the next one was the, when Harrison got yes. killed. Yep. There's and a big jump was, there. Yeah. Because in between all those films, I made the prequels, Yeah, they, they did the early ones, yeah, and then they not reset seen. it slightly, and then there was a couple and of And I intend to go in there, because yeah. people says I can go and see Rogue One independently, because... You yes, really know. You, can, you can. You can. You can. It, so it, it is a standalone. Because but there's just... another neighbour in this block who doesn't live here in that no, he still owns a flat. Okay. He was in Rogue One. There's another stormtrooper in his Ah, block. okay. But he was not a significant one, obviously. But he only, he's a doctor and he's gone to Switzerland to work. Right. Um, but he was in it because he knew one of the ADs on it and yep. they got him on. So, okay, yeah. well, it's, so yeah. we've met, we've had a chat. Okay. <laughs> Comparing movies. Well, you mentioned we had a party, <laughs> beginning of COVID, lockdown, yeah. we were all out here drinking one night, and, and Will came down and with a bottle of wine mm. and so on, and we were talking about things, and he said, no, I, <laughs> and I was in uh, Rogue One, I said, why is this a, a stormtrooper? Because we're talking about extra work stuff. Yep. And all my friends looked at me, because they all know, yeah. and they went, 
You ain't going to beat this one. I said, no, it's TK2421. <laughs> oh, I'll shut up then. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so in this plot, there's two stormtroopers. Wow. Yeah. Small world. It's a small world, yeah. Small galaxy. <laughs> it's a small galaxy, yeah. yes. So obviously, the, the first scene that you were in is literally that. No, not necessarily. We were there several days. Um, I mean, there was a core group, I think, of, of people that were probably more like uh, stuntmen. Yep. Ability. And I think they call them, are they call spats? No, they're special action. Yep. Extras between yeah, yeah. an ordinary extra and a, between a stuntman that can go around and tumble and whatever and do all that. Yeah. Yes, because there was a few, a few scenes a, a involved. Some of that. So the majority of us were just running around through one of these things yep. and just literally running through the corridors and whatever. A lot of that's not been seen because I watched it again the other week and I cut a half of it's been cut. Yes. A yes. lot of it's been okay. cut and chopped about. And yep. even the scene going up there, I think there was a lot more going on than that actually show. They, I mean, they do now. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they, 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 cut so, they cut so much out. I mean, I've just watched the whole of Killing Eve I did a scene last year. It's not even this at all. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I oh, literally sat there as a, as a, sorry, a Russian um, old man playing chess in Battersea <laughs> Park with Fiona Shaw sitting here yeah. talking to a, a, a Russian compatriot in that storyline. Yeah. And it was it was went for ages. We were playing chess and she's they're doing this conversation where there's several old men all around playing chess. Nothing at all. Oh, it's completely what a shame. Been, it's been completely cut. <laughs> what a shame. So various scenes. Mm. So how many days were you working? I on? think I did about six in total. You know, it's such a long time ago, I can't probably remember. Because maybe even I mean they weren't consecutive days. There was yeah, just, you get in those days what the agents did, you had to ring up. It's not, you know, we didn't have mobile phones and stuff like that, so you rang in every yeah. day at five o'clock. Am I required tomorrow? If you were required tomorrow, sometimes on set, they'd say, we'll see you tomorrow. But when we were checking out getting those chitties, they'd yeah. say, we'll be in touch, or yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. So they, they picked their own people they wanted on the day, sort of thing. It depended what, the, and it depended what they were filming, I suppose, because they yeah. just chop, you know, they'd do the end at the beginning and the beginning at the end. And stuff like that, so you don't do things in an order. Moving into a little bit more of a focus now on you as your character. Obviously, after day one, you've turned up, you've been uh, measured and fitted. Mm -hmm. um, was that kit then effectively reserved for you for each day when you turned up? Yep, or? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, 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 because you have a hangers then and just the yeah, name tag or whatever. Right, mm -hmm. okay. Because we were more or less all the same size, because they had everybody, apart from the short guy, which was Victor, um, the one that hit his head, he was a short. How he got on, because I thought I thought five ten five eleven was the, the height. Yeah, I'm five nine and a half now. I've shrunk, but I was definitely five eleven when I was twenty three, twenty four. So, yeah, <laughs> they do say you shrink. Yeah, but and he was quite short, but so he was quite. Up, but he did a lot of work, so I think he just knew he got in through the back right. door in a way. You knew he knew people in high places. I think maybe. But we were all we were, we were all about the same height. And be body built. Yes, yeah, and you, yes. I mean, that's quite, quite evident frankly, on what is on Quite film. frankly, that you can wear each other's costume, really. Yeah. Okay. Because you've got the right bits in the right place. Yep. TK421, um, was that, were you given a script for that element, no, no, or no, no, was no, it, no. they just, you're going to do this, you'll stand no, no, there? No, no, I was just, honestly, honestly God, the only reason I was, there, I was just standing in the right place at the right time, but this other guy, and they said, what are you two doing there? And he said, we're going to stand there, we're just going to film this shot, but you're going to go up there. Yeah. And that was that, really. But there was other shots. There's other scenes where there's a lot of action going on because we hear the noise. Yeah. And that, that, that might have done some cutting, but there's other scenes, I think, where there's a lot of action going around. There's two guys standing there doing their own. He said, we're going to stand there. We're just going to film this shot. Are you going to go up there? Yeah. And that was that, really. But there was other shots. There's other scenes where there's a lot of action going on because we hear the noise. Yeah. And that, that, that might have done some cutting, but there's other scenes, I think, where there's a lot of action going around. There's two guys standing there as two other guys. Yeah. It's not until it's the scene where there's the noise on the ship. Yeah. That then me and, and the other guy, we go up. Yeah. And uh, I've never come across that man oh. since. Okay. Okay. Really nice. nice to be, I don't know whether he'd be still alive, because I was only I was about 23, 24 at the time. I mean, he was quite older. He was probably early 40s. I uh, his name. It was either Alan or Andrew. He began me day. I remember that. And he was an antique dealer. And he gave, a couple of days, he gave me a lift back into London in his old, you know, Ford, Ford, Ford Fiesta Smiler. And, uh, and, and, I, and I've never, ever heard of him since. Uh, never come across him as any of this stuff. Yeah. 
Okay. And yeah, he was the one that stood on the, the other side. Right. There's a chap that I'm uh, from Texas who's a Facebook friend and um, very up on keeping in touch with stormtroopers yeah. and whatever of Star Wars. He made a reference to a person down in the south of England whose birthday was not long ago and made a reference to him being the other person on the ramp. Okay. Next to me, and mentioned my name, and I never went back to this person and challenged this because I thought I looked this person up and said, "Not him." Oh. But he could be in another scene where they yeah. didn't go up the ramp. Okay. So I. Okay. Well, maybe this this may reach out and find we'll find the mystery man. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm sure he was an anti, definitely resenting to antiques, but he'd be I don't know seventy. He probably be in his mid eighties. Okay. Were you physically given the ID? TK41, or was it just... No, honestly, I had no idea what it was no until idea. somebody said it years later. Right, okay. Because on the day, you don't... Yes. You don't hear it. You just the, do... Yeah, you don't hear anything. Yeah, okay. No, that, that's... Because that. most of the script would be... Because there was a lot of action, if I remember, with the controller bloke when he yep. comes to the farm, but there's a lot of other stuff with, yep. I think, yep. Peter Cushion in that, in that scene upstairs in the... Because we could see a lot of that going on. There was a room up there from when we were on the ground. Wow. You could see people up there <laughs> from through the window. Yeah. So it was, the, the set was so precise, yeah. Yeah, 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 accurate yeah. in a way. Yeah. Um, so there were probably areas where they were up there with the cameras doing the close-up stuff, but you could see him through the window and oh, stuff wow. like that. When you were getting suited up for that day, were you aware that your outfit had different components? Not until the day when you say the different components. All stormtroopers had a waist belt and a thermal detonator on the on the back. And that, that was standard. As you mm -hmm. look through the films, every stormtrooper has that as their standard kit. It mm -hmm. forms part of our mm -hmm. code of conduct with our our kits now. As you walk across screen to take that position, it's quite clear that one, you don't have a thermal detonator on the back. Um, two, you've got a grappling hook. And three, you've got a voice comm unit on your belt. And you're the only stormtrooper in A New Hope that has that. Were you conscious of that at the time, or, or not? No. The reason why it's of significance, obviously in the movie, Mark Hamill takes over, supposedly mm -hmm. takes over your mm -hmm. suit to become his mm -hmm. stormtrooper. And that must it, be another series. During his Death, Death Star escape mm -hmm. run with um, Carrie Fisher, obviously he uses the grapple yeah. hook and the voice comm mm -hmm. unit when he's in the garbage yeah. compactor. No, I was just wondering if... It, if if anyone was aware, because it just it, there, there were two pivotal elements of that particular stormtrooper. So that was Mark's uniform per yes. Dress, yeah. Yes, but obviously I didn't have anything extra added to my uniform. No, it was yeah. it was on your like I say as you initially sort of walk up to take your position at the side of the ramp, you you've got that already. Do really? I? Yes, it's quite clear. There's several scenes where you you turn. You sort of turn and your back's facing the camera, and you can clearly see you've got no thermal detonator, and you've got the grapple hook, and you've got the voice comm unit. I just wonder if anyone was aware, because obviously, like I say, it's, the, I the costume aware. itself becomes Mark Hamill's stormtrooper suit. No, because the pictures I've got, it wouldn't mean anything to me anyway, I don't think so. Right. <laughs> it, it was a brand new film, nobody really knew what yeah. they were doing and what, what was happening. I guess it nobody would have questioned it. it. It's only now we sort of look back and it's almost one of the things we all do as costumers now when you're watching the film, you look less at the film and you look more at the costumes. So obviously when TK41 comes down the ramp, that's not you. No. Right. Because that be, should be Mark Hamill, should it not? Yes. It's supposed to be Mark Hamill, but obviously yeah. didn't know whether it was used, they just used somebody else to infill. Because in the very next scene, Mark Hamill's walking into the control room at the when did you, or have you become aware of the significance of your character's ID number uh, being only, one of the only TKs? Yeah, well, I've told that in a long time. I mean, back in 2000 when I went down to live in uh, Exeter for a while, I managed, <coughs> I managed to sort of meet somebody who was well in Star Wars and said that was the significance of the uh, character, basically. Yep. And that's where that postcard came from. Yep. <laughs> what I knew at the moment. <laughs> The two characters standing at the urine not saying, why aren't you at your post? as a joke. <laughs> um, that came from this chap in, in Exeter. Yeah. He sent me the car. So have you seen that? So that was, I mean, that's, it took a long time. I, I had no idea until more recently, really. Yeah, no, that's... And I've said, I've, you know, when, when I spoke with Dean and, and other people, I've said, you know, this is the situation. It's, you know, I've got no proof. 
Yeah. I should have kept all my chitties, but I didn't. I get, I've got my FIA membership card. That's all I've got from those days. Um, and it was that was it. It was just that one scene. That's yeah. all I did. And a lot of running around corridors. Yeah. And that was all we did. Yeah. yeah. In the various chase yeah. scenes. Yeah. yeah. And there was another time when I was just... There was a lunchtime one day, and they said, well, you, you look as though you're doing nothing, come with us. And I went to them, we stuck me in a cockpit, put on a black glove, and I just sat there pressing the joystick. Yeah. And I keep watching the film, and I don't know whether that I can't, that doesn't they use that either, really. It's supposed okay. to be Darth Vader's hands, I think, when he went oh, to, to the thing. Why? So just doing that. Um, but when I watch the film, whenever you see Darth Vader, when he does, does go off in, in his. Uh, yeah, for that battle, yeah, you see his arm and his colleague, so we can't do yes. it. Yes, I think all of that did because we got black undersuits on. They, anyway, they yeah, took the bits of the thing off and yeah. then just sat there doing that. Fondest memory of working on that movie? Well, doing that bit really, cause that's all I had to do apart from running around the corridor. Um, and the nicest part, this is my first job, and it was just meeting some of the other guys, none of which I can remember. I've met a couple, uh, another guy called Stephen, who said he remember me, I don't remember him at all. Victor, I vaguely remember, because he was the shorter guy. Um, and then this guy, Andrew or Alan, yeah. whoever stood next to me. That's it, really. I mean, it was, it was like, wow, because the set was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing, because somebody yes. who's never been on yeah, a yeah, film yeah. set like that before. Yeah, 1976. Um, in 76, I mean, I, when I look back, I think technical stuff going on around those films at the time was really pretty advanced really so some of the special effects yeah and I'd never seen a green screen or a blue screen before and wondered what the hell was going on anyway and how yeah. they actually made those battles in space happen <laughs> yeah you know it's like oh that's that was green before yeah <laughs> no it's space <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know it's uh, it's in, I, I thought that's quite advanced so I haven't seen Anything of its, its, its kind in that, in that day and age, really. Until later on, we saw Indiana Jones, and that was quite good. <laughs> yes, yes. In, a, in a, well, not really, a, a, another a part of the galaxy, obviously. Yeah. So that's my questions. Thank you very much for, for answering them. It's been, mm. it's been fantastic. I've very, very much enjoyed it, listening, listening to you talk quite fondly of your time on, on, on a film mm. that's quite dear to, to a lot yeah. of us. I often wonder that because the, you know because all the people I've then sort of met since with Dean and then with Alan and wherever and they were on the next ones I never did that one and we're all similar age and I'm thinking if I had have stuck it out would I've been asked to <laughs> this? wow you know if I'd have stayed in the industry instead of yeah. getting back to engineering I often wonder but I wanted any more I'd probably understand understood more yeah about what was going on in the the trilogy then at the time wasn't it because it was the first three yes made and then it's yeah. And then there was a break, and then special editions. Yeah, and do the prequels, prequels and, and then the other yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. So, Stephen, thank you very much for taking time out of your day for this little interview and answering a few questions about the galaxy that you were a part of in 1977. That means so much of us all today and continues to gain new fans on a daily basis. 501st Legion started 25 years ago with a Stormtrooper costume and an idea. That idea has now grown into a big global organisation. Today is April the 21st, known as Stormtrooper Day, a day truly fitting for this little announcement I'd now like to make. Stephen Bailey, TK41, for your continued contribution to the Star Wars universe and on behalf of Gary Hales and the 501st Legion's UK Garrison, Alvin Johnson, the founder, Justin Sonfield, commanding officer, 14,470 active worldwide members, 500 plus honorary members and 5,500 active stormtroopers in our organisation. It gives me great personal pleasure to announce that the 501st Legion would like to recognise you as an honorary member of the Legion and I'd now like to present you with this small token of our appreciation and to welcome you aboard. Wow, so. you cracked it. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Wow. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome. Let's, Thank let's have it. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's, there we go. Got that. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much.